Good morning and welcome to First Congregational Church's celebration of its youth and its children. We are taking on the words of Jesus this morning, let the little children come unto me. And so bringing your childlike spirits, gather around and all of us together will just exult in the church alive through the paintings, through the songs, and through our, our wonderful superintendent's voice will come the celebration of what's going on here. So welcome, friends, and I invite us to share together as we begin this happy morning these words as our call to worship together. We come to worship with praise on our lips. We come to give you glory, God, for you hold our hands when we fall down. You throw open the doors so that we can all enter into your grace. We come to hear the stories of your son that he loved to tell us and we love to hear. We come to know the joy and the peace and the hope that comes from belonging in that story of your love, which shall never end. Good morning. Today's scripture is from Acts chapter 17, verses 22 to 31. Paul then stood up in the meeting of the Areopagus and said, People of Athens, I see that in every way you are very religious. For as I walked around and looked carefully at your objects of worship, I even found an altar with this inscription, To an unknown God. So you are ignorant of the very thing you worship. This is what I am going to proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it is the Lord of heaven and earth and does not live in temples built by human hands, and he is not served by human hands, as if he needed anything. Rather, he himself gives everyone life and breath and everything else. From one man he made all the nations, that they should inhabit the whole earth. And he marked out their appointed times in history and the boundaries of their lands. God did this so that they would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him, though he is not far away from any one of us, for in him we live and move and have our being. As some of your own poets have said, we are his offspring. Therefore, since we are God's offspring, we should not think that the divine being is like gold or silver or stone, an image made by human design and skill. In the past, God overlooked such ignorance, but now he commands all people everywhere to repent. For he has set a day when he will judge the world with justice by the man he has appointed. He has given proof of this to everyone by raising him from the dead. As we continue our celebration of Children's Sunday, please join Laurel and Chloe in leading us in verses 1 and 3 of Jesus Loves Me, This I Know. today to give the children's sermon in honor of the Children's Sunday. 
the last Sunday of the school year. And I'm going to ask you all now um, to pretend that I'm in your room because I'm pretending that you're all right in front of me because I need to see your faces and I don't know what, just what you look like. So what I want you to do now, everybody, is to close your eyes. I'm going to say a word and I want you to think about what you see. God. Now open your eyes. What did you see? I happen to know that none of you saw the same thing as another person because I've been doing this in my Sunday school class for years and nobody ever has the same answer and that's okay. We all see God in a different way but as Christians we believe God is, has three characteristics really that are just His. I have them to show you what they are. This first one is omniscient. Big word, huh? It means that God knows everything. Okay? The next word is omnipotent. And that means that God has unlimited power. And I love this last one. This one is God is omnipresent. And that means he is everywhere all at the same time. Incredible, huh? Well, none of us are like God. But we try very, very hard to try to get to know God and have a relationship with Him. And Reverend Deb and I have tried over the years to get you to know who God is. Okay, so we're going to play a little game now. And I have put this together to show you how you all love God through the year in the Sunday School. So grab a piece of paper and pen. We're going to do 13 things. And I'm going to give you a hint at each one. And you have to guess what I'm talking about that we did during the year. All right, ready? Here we go. Number one. This is your hint. Here we go. I'm going to put this on. And see if anybody can think about what we did where maybe you would put these on and we would, in December, we would celebrate God's Son. You have an idea? The answer is the pageant. Get a check if you got that right. Number two. Uh, let's see. Oh, here's another thing that we did. This was awesome. We all got together and we went to Exeter. Do you remember that? And what did we do? And these are the people that did it. Have an idea? What did we do? We walk to show others that there are very many hungry people amongst us and we did something to help them. The answer is the crop walk. Okay, number three. You study the Bible with your friends to hear the word of God. Hmm, let me give you a hint. Does this mean anything to you? Who has an answer? Attending Sunday school. You come and you hear God's word every week. We love having you and we love teaching you. Number four, you hosted a raffle and a variety show to raise money for struggling families around the world. There's your hint. What is it? You know, it's heifer. I'm sure you all got that one right because that's a fun one. And I wanted to let you know that this year, we raised $1,160 for Heifer. I don't know if we've ever raised that much before. I am so proud of all of you for all the work you did. So, congratulate yourselves. Here we go. Number five. Giving to those who may be clothed. Hmm, what's that mean? Does this help? Anybody have an idea? The confirmation kids usually do this for me. What's this? You got it. The hat and mitten tree. We send out dozens and dozens of hats and mittens to all the kids in the schools so that when they have recess someday and it's freezing out and they need to have something on and they went to school without anything, the nurses give them to them. You did that. Number six. This shows our love of nature, which of course God gave to us, right? And you spent all summer maybe making something this is your hint. Here's another hint. The sunflower competition, did you guess it? 
And this is Sammy. She won last year. Look at the size of that. Who other than God can make that out of a tiny little seed? Fantastic. Here we go. Number seven. Showing little ones what patience and kindness looks like. Oh, don't, no, 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 don't, oh, no, no, don't cry. It's okay. What am I doing? Who does this for us? This is for the nursery attendants that take care of all the little kids in the nursery. And you know what? They were once little like you in the Sunday school, and then they went to confirmation, and now they've come back to take care of the littlest kids. That's God's love. We are on to eight. We cook to feed the homeless. Hmm. Ring a bell. Anybody? Anybody? Two answers to this one. We have Crossroads Cooking, and now we're doing Vincent St. Vincent DePaul in Hampton. That's been really fun to do, and I know some of our confirmation kids have gone and done that too. So now number nine, humble giving so children may know joy at Christmas. And we put all that humble giving in here. This year it was just money. What's the answer? It's a new one. Project Joy. We gave about $800 to the firefighters to give kids money for presents and to show them God's love this year. That was great. Number 10, remembering those who were once able to come to church. And when they did, they showed us how to really love God. And you made them these. So we made three of them this year, Christmas, Valentine's Day, and Easter. Beloved elders bags, you guessed it, that's right. Isn't that beautiful? We happen to have an extra one that I will save for next year and we'll give that out on Valentine's Day. We have 11, we're getting near the end, gathering together to share bread and wine, to honor the sacrifice of Jesus. What is that? We didn't have any in the freezer. I had to bring my own. But what is this for? And if I had a little cup of juice, what do you think? Communion. We share God's love in the church with everybody, from somebody who's 100 years old down to the little guys who are just crawling on the ground. Number 12, raising voices to praise God. And I don't sing. I don't know why I just did that. What's that? Who uses this? Oh, <laughs> who uses that? Jennifer Ramsey does, and what does she use it for? Yes, that's right. The adult choir and the kids choir. And we love hearing you sing. It makes the service so special when everybody's singing and you're raising your voices. It's wonderful. That is prayer in song. And last one, number 13, where you get the courage to tell the world that you're a follower of God. Very specific group of people. Here they are. These are mine this year. Do you know who they are? Those are the confirmation kids. And they got confirmed this year. And they went on a mission trip, which served tons of people down in Providence, Rhode Island, and showed God. And hopefully, they'll come back next year and help us in the Sunday School to help you kids also understand what God is all about. So this is what a year looks like in the Sunday School at the First Congregational Church of Hampton. and. I couldn't be more proud of all your kids for what you've done. And um, we're going to do this again. We're going to start up in September. We're going to do it all over again. And we're going to have a blast doing it. So right now, I miss you all. Wash your hands. Stay safe. And we'll see you in September. Oh, now I'm not the only one who sees a wonderful teacher at work with her children. Any of you are watching have caught the spirit that Donna McKechnie shares with our children and youth every single Sunday as our church superintendent. And she's been doing this for more than a decade. And over that same decade, we have had teachers rotate in and out. We've had men and women, we've had young adults, and every single one of those teachers has been magnificent. I can remember one teacher saying to me, but I don't know enough about the Bible. And I said to her, it doesn't matter. 
Where God's word is concerned, we are all teachers, we are all learners. And the wisdom that goes back and forth is a powerful, powerful example of how the Holy Spirit lives in us this day, which is what we celebrate at Eastertide. So I want to offer a huge thank you to all the teachers that have served this year, who have created relationships of deep and abiding love and joy and friendship. And so rather than take note of the whole world this morning, in the prayer I offer, followed by the Lord's Prayer, I'd like to focus on just this topic, the learning, serving, teaching moments of this past year and the people who have made them happen. So let us pray together. Teaching God, thank you for nurturing us all as students of your powerful and loving word and your enormous wisdom. We are grateful for this past year in which all of us have grown in faith, in friendship, and in relationship to God. We give thanks for the teachers who by sharing their curiosity and hope and kindness have brought out those same qualities in all they've taught. And thus they have taught our children to live what they believe. Their insight and faithfulness and dedication, their patience and their peace and their joy, they are the living stones which are building up this our spiritual household here in this little corner of the state. Oh God, remind our teachers that their gifts have not gone unnoticed, that the weekly bread they have fed our children has fed them in so many ways and so well that our children's growing faith and lively spirits will impact generations to come. We are a blessed community of teachers and learners, and may your Holy Spirit and the summer spirit we're about to enter refresh us. And may this coming fall be a time filled with newness and maybe even nearness in your name a name in which we begin the prayer that the great teacher taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We are pleased that you have chosen to be part of our worship service here at First Congregational Church of Hampton, the church that has been proclaiming Jesus Christ in Hampton since 1638. We are a Christ-centered church with an inviting faith a growing faith, and a serving faith, and we welcome you to join us in accomplishing this mission. We also encourage you to join in the wonderful worship of giving. You can give securely online or by check using the giving information on your screen. We are a praying church, and we sincerely want to pray with you for any needs you may have. You may send those prayer requests to the church office by email, which is also on your screen. Again, we are happy that you have joined us in this service and hope that you will be part of our worship again soon. As we leave our joyous celebration of our youth and children today and go back to enjoy those same children in all of our homes across the community, 
Let's go with these wonderfully uplifting words that come from the prophet Isaiah from chapter 55. And you shall go out in joy and be led forth in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall burst into song and the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorns will come up the cypress. Instead of the briar will come up the myrtle. And all shall be for the Lord a memorial, an everlasting sign of love from which we shall never